Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today, Bill, what we're talking about is, you know, we did a video about condos and the crisis on condos. Like nobody's buying condos because of the new rules on reserves and HOAs and all right. that stuff yep. and insurance costs and the prices are dropping. Well, it was a crisis before, but now I've been I've been following the trend and you know listening to everybody and reading about it. Now it's not even a crisis anymore. It's just a complete meltdown. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating a little bit. It's it is a complete meltdown. I know some buildings that some investors are trying to buy everybody out, mm -hmm. so could they, they could literally knock down the buildings and build something that meets today's codes. Right. They're down in Fort Lauderdale and say, well, that's Miami. Fort stuff. Lauderdale, Miami area. Because the, yeah. the real estate's so valuable down there that it's cheaper just to buy everybody out, knock it down, and put luxury. They're putting in luxury condos. Yeah, but, but you know, there's people that have been in these condos for yeah. 30 years. Yep. And now, because of the insurance crisis, and they can't sell them. Like, you can pick any pick any older condo building in the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, even here. Mm -hmm. I could go to Clearwater right now, and I'll pick out three or four of them on Zillow for you. And you could see every floor of that building has multiple units for sale. Yeah, the assessments have gone through the roof. You know, either or they've either done assessments or they've just raised the monthly fees. So, but I've seen some people going down like 30, 40 percent. I know two people, obviously, I'm not gonna say any names, but because <laughs> you know them too, mm -hmm. that I know one for sure, but the second one probably too. They, just, they bought it a couple of years ago, the HOA fee tripled on them. Mm -hmm. And the insurance went outrageous. They're going to walk away from it. They're literally going to walk away from it. That's unfortunate. But it's not that they want it. Listen, it's not that they don't want to pay for it. They physically you can't. Just can't. They There's, just yeah, can't. And, that, and that's what's happening to a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people love their condos, love everything about them, but they physically just don't have the money. Mm -hmm. So if you get a special assessment saying, hey, you know what, your HOA fee is going to go from $400 a month to $1,200, and we need $20,000 up front just to meet the laws that, right, because, of the, the because, because of the collapse, the building mm -hmm. collapse, you know? And I know there's, I know right now they're trying to, the, the uh, people in office are trying to figure out a way to help out, you know, because they're the ones who created this law, and now they're realizing everybody was kicking the can you know, down the road, and now it caught up. Right, and it's a catch-22 because the law was put into place so that that catastrophe didn't happen again. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was horrible. It was, it was, it was t horrendous. So the state had to step in, and usually if the state's got to step in or the government's got to step in, it can kind of maybe sometimes be a little pendulum swing to the other side. So in this case, obviously, something needed to be done because things weren't being maintained appropriately and the deferred maintenance on significant items kept like you said getting kicked down the can kept getting kicked down the road so we're they're stuck there and i get it they're trying to do something to help but what do you do when you just it's not that you don't want to afford like you said it's just that you physically can't i it's like if you've got x coming in and x and y going out what do you do? You can only work so many hours in a day, and you can only make so much money to Especially pay for these things. Especially if you're on a fixed income. Right, because a lot of people are, the, the like condos that we're talking about right now, they're more retirement Yeah, condos. because like, it makes sense. Like say, you know, my house here. Like if I was retiring, I didn't want to take care of this house anymore because it's just the size of it, cutting grass or whatever it is, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that anymore. So for me, the perfect thing is, I still like being near the water, is a condo on the water. So now I'm retired, say, I buy a condo on the water because it makes sense. But mm -hmm. now, it doesn't make sense anymore because I just can't afford it. Right, and the condos don't have to be on the water. That's the crazy thing. It's, you know, there's, it's a, a certain age 
how old the condo is. How many floors? Three stories. Yeah. Three, yeah, the three stories and up and within a proximity of water. And in Pinellas County here where we are at, you're pretty much in proximity of water just about everywhere. Absolutely. So what we're going to do is, you know, obviously there's a lot of articles being written about this. We're not going to read the whole article, but we're going to skim through it and mm -hmm. we're going to talk about it a little bit. In the meantime, do me a favor. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated. So, Bill, this starts off with Florida hit by the worst real estate crisis in decades as desperate condo owners slash prices by 40 percent is paradise lost that's the name of the article and hmm. you know i think that people a lot of people from what i'm seeing are slashing their prices up to 40 percent but certain people can't because they'll have negative equity right so if you purchased it more recently then you probably don't have enough equity to slash it by 40%, or you're gonna to have to come to the table with money when you close. Yeah, you know, there was a really, really person I was talking about after the, the collapse and everything, and then they, when they started talking about the laws changing, he said to me, you know what, I'm gonna sell my condo. He was in Clearwater Beach. He mm -hmm. says, I'm gonna sell my condo. He was like 10th floor, is like really, really expensive. It was during the peak too. The, literally the collapse just happened. And I said, oh, are you worried about this happening to your building? He says, no, because he says they're going to have to pass these laws. And the laws are going to be against buildings like this, probably. Yep. And before people's rumors start swirling, I'm going to sell. He made a killing on it. I think, I think he sold it within the same day or the next day afterwards. Oh, when we had the peak selling yeah. frenzy stuff, particularly in condos. So, yeah. So he went and bought a house because he had so much profit in there. And I had to go do an insurance special for him. And I said, hey, whatever happened to your condo? He says, the owner, I feel so bad for them. They're trying to sell it. My, the HOA there, I goes, I didn't know. It went up five times. Five times. Ouch. Retirement couple. Yeah. So it's like... I mean, you sell condos. I'm sure it's not that easy for you to sell condos now. No, condos right now, everything, so we went back to kind of where condos were. Condos weren't like the easiest thing to sell in the first place, mm -hmm. um, even pre-pandemic. It was a little easier, but now it's, it's definitely a bigger challenge to sell a condo. It, they do still sell. People still understand what's going on. And some of the things that we're referencing were more in the you know, South Florida area. So, but they still apply here and they still do happen here. And I have seen condo prices go, they're, they're extremely elevated, but the absorption rate, which is basically uh, how we measure how fast condos come on the market and go off the market has dropped tremendously, which I would expect to see that just because the market's cooling in general and we needed that, but it's even kind of surpassed that uh, because people are scared right now with condos, period. You blame them? No, I don't, not at all. I don't blame um, them at all. Yeah, particularly if it's a three-story condo. And, you know, you do have to be cautious with that. And you, you really, really have to pay attention to whether or not there are upcoming assessments. And just because somebody says there's not an upcoming assessment doesn't mean that the next day they vote an assessment in or they change the rules six months down right. the road. So you have to be prepared for these kind of things. Um, you know, and that's what these milestone reports help with too, because they give you a better insight into what the condo condition is and how well their reserves yeah. are stacked. Because if they've got, if you've had a well-managed condo mm -hmm. and the repairs have been done, and we're talking, think about this for a second. We're talking elevators, yeah. fire sprinkler systems, plumbing. Eventually plumbing has to get replaced everywhere. You right. know, like it's just, it's not just a condo thing, but you know, plumbing, balconies, stucco, roofs, air conditioners, windows, these are all condo things. You know, the air conditioner may be yours, but the balconies, the windows, typically those are part of the condo. So those have to be budgeted for replacement and repair as the years go on. And the big ticket items are the fire sprinkler systems and uh, elevators. You know, right now there's a couple condos on uh, our local beaches, you know, St. Pete, uh, Clearwater that are doing that. And it, that's, you think that's easy? That's a big ordeal, so that's huge. I, I know we're supposed to be reading this article, but I have one question and we'll start on that part of it. But 
Would you buy a condo in Florida yourself right now? If yes, what would you look at? Because I know what I would look at if I was going to buy a condo. Or would you just not buy a condo? I'd still buy a condo, personally. All right. Okay. But, what, but what would you look for? If it was a high-rise condo, I would be looking for those things that we talked about. I want to look at the milestone report. I want to know, do they have enough reserve? Because they're supposed to be broken down to where, okay, this much is earmarked for the elevators to repair, be repaired at, and replaced at this time, X, Y, Z, so on and so forth. So if they've got all their documents in a row, you're kind of okay. But there's still so many unknowns right now with Florida in general, it would, it would be a very, I would make a cautious move. I would probably lean more towards the two-story condos, you know, the smaller type, you know, condo slash, you know, we would more consider That's a townhouse, one of the things I would a condo. Do. Because I don't want to have to deal with that excessive But, but the whole stuff. thing is just like, you know, in Miami and Fort Lauderdale and even Clearwater Beach, you're not going to find many of those because they want to make as much money as possible. So right. they built these 12-story buildings. Yeah, 12, 18 stories. There's there's huge condos out there along the you beach. Know, there's only a few. You know, there's a few out there. You just have to look. But at the same time, I would, you know, for me, I would buy one that's a newer building because some of them are brand new buildings. Right. And then one is so if you but then you're paying more for it. So it's kind of like that catch, catch 22. 22. It's like, you buying, know? yeah, buying an older house or buying. A and newer. they do get old. And then eventually they're going to have the same problem, hopefully because they have the foresight, again, that they've got to do the milestones and things like that. The management company and the board for the condo pays attention to these things. Let's read this a little bit, okay? Florida condo owners are slashing prices by up to 40% as they strive to dodge yep. massive income repair costs. That's what we just spoke about, so that's true. Some units have almost lost a half a million Wow, wiped off their asking price as safety fears trigger a wave to, of sell-offs. That's what I was just saying. In what realtors have described as the worst real estate crisis in decades, it's bad. Because it, it's like the crisis that we had, you know, in 2008, 2007, that was a financial crisis. You know, mm -hmm. people just you right. know, bad loans. This is the physical, this is actually the physical structure, the condo itself. Right. This is... That's even better. And I'll tell you one thing. Um, this other person that really wanted to buy a condo, I think he was on the sixth, seventh floor, loved it, did everything. He's having a hell of a time finding financing for it. Yeah, I would imagine. You know? One to three bedroom, two bath condos in St. Petersburg. Okay, so. Wow. Right around here. Yep, we're right here. <laughs> Listed for about $1.2 million at the start of the year, but still without a buyer. The owner slashed the asking price to $898,000 last week to seven fifteen. dollars So just playing devil's advocate, mm -hmm. A, that's a huge slash. But I would say, did was the condo actually worth $1.2 million to start with? Because I'm just saying we still see a lot of people pricing things way too high because they saw their neighbor do it. And it was two years ago. I have that conversation almost daily. So it, it's, I, I still see this, but at face value, I would agree with this because I do see a lot of condo owners slashing prices pretty much back to where they were before the pandemic in that gain, you know, that 40 plus percent gain mm -hmm. that we got over the last couple of years. So. It's not far fetched to see this thing went from 1.2 down to 715,000 to get it to move. Right. So it might have been overpriced, but you know, I'm skimming this article yeah. and stuff, so we don't have to read the whole thing. But one part of this says now the DailyMail.com has mm -hmm. revealed an estimate: 360,000 property owners in South Florida alone. Okay. Mm -hmm. The home of the condo boom, which we know that was the condo oh, yeah. place to be. Yep. May not, may not afford to, for repairs required by the new law. So, let's talk about these people. Seriously. Okay. What can they do? They, right now, they, they can't afford the new fees. So, obviously, if they don't pay the HOA fees or the special assessment, HOAs have a lot of power. They could foreclose on it. 
Condo associations. Condo associations. Yep. Because uh, the, just so everybody understands, HOA laws and condo laws are two separate things. All right. Thanks for the correction. Just, I mean, it's, just, you know, so it's important. Everybody does it, but it is important to understand that condo yeah. rules and HOA rules are different. Absolutely. Okay. So now they're like, okay, I got to sell. Now they have to figure out where they're going to live. A lot of them are retirees. They don't want a house to take care of. Okay. But anyways, let's say right. they're going to move out of state. But now they put it on the market and nobody wants to buy it. Mm -hmm. This is such a screwed up situation. And I'm trying, I'm not trying to be, I'm trying to find a positive, like, okay, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. But I don't see any positive things about a condo right now, a multi-story condo. Well, I mean, if you've got the money to be able to afford it, then it, this is kind of all water under the bridge and it doesn't really matter. Because that's what we, I think you're going to start seeing. I know in Miami, there's been articles, because I talked to a lot of agents down there too, and they're saying the same thing. The condo market is switching over to, it's going to be the, 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 yeah, rich, the rich, period. If you want to live on the beach, it's no longer the average person. It's not the retirement community situation for the condos. And they're getting rid of those condos or those people are being forced out from one reason or another. And it's going to be these super luxury condos. I mean, th there's some that just went in in Clearwater on the Clearwater Dunning border on oh, yeah. Edgewater it's, Drive. Those things it's, are freaking they're, a fortune. They're, yeah, they're millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. So basically, so what you're saying is the condos are for the rich. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's really the, the shift in that's Florida, happening. At least. Yeah, and those, some of those beach areas are close to the water, intercoastal type areas. It's because they're new condos so they're super expensive or they're old condos and they need to be a majority of them need to be repaired so that's where i said there's still some diamonds in the rough but you got to plan for that because time still keeps moving forward no matter what and eventually they get old and they're going to have to be repaired you want to hear something funny uh tanya was like saying hey she just got back from new hampshire mm -hmm. she's saying hey i, I want to buy a condo in new hampshire i said all right you know i was like why but you know, whatever <laughs> yeah you know, her family's there and but there is no condos there oh it's like there is no condos she's like there's no condos it's like well there's a couple here and there but the few that are in there like southern new hampshire the portsmouth area are like 1.3 1.4 million oh sure jimmy just go buy a condo <laughs> <laughs> but i just don't see a solution do you guys have what do you guys think about this i just think it is a major major crisis it's definitely an issue and if you know i mean the only thing just off the top of my head that i could see if you did get hit with a giant assessment that you couldn't afford on a monthly um that you had to pay up front outright would be you'd have to do um you know you'd have to pull some equity out you know of your of your mortgage and get a loan just to fix it it's just crazy. to just to cover it so you know at least you could spread it out a little bit yeah it's a tough spot. It is a tough spot. There is no solution, but we'll keep you guys up to date on what's going on. Right now, it's bad, and there's no solution that I can see. We'll see what legislation does, what Florida, uh, the governor does, and all that stuff. In the meantime, that's today's video. Do me a favor. Consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel, and it's greatly appreciated. And we'll talk to you on the next one. Talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. All right. Bye. Bye.